Hi, I'm Jay, and this is Epic Games from Epic Game Music. You just recently joined Retroware TV. How long ago was that? I did, uh, that was in October, so fairly recently. Yeah, that was awesome to see that because you do something that is very unique. Mm -hmm. And I honestly haven't seen anybody else do this. So first things first here, what is your channel? My channel is Epic Game Music, aka youtube.com slash X-T-R-O-N-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z. Now I got that a long time ago. Holy shit. And that's just one of those things where you're stuck with the URL. You know? So let's just say that <laughs> in the underbar, there'll be a link to it. Yeah. And uh, we won't have to say that ever yeah. again. Search Epic Game Music. So, so... You know, the thing that I noticed about your channel is it's the how unique it is really stands out to me and like I don't know how you do that constantly because it seems like so much work and obviously you have a major background in music itself. Yeah. So first thing I wanted to know is what, you know, you're obviously more into video gaming uh, covers on the on the show. Sometimes you do like anime covers, I noticed. Mm -hmm. But in terms of video game, when was the first time you had sort of that amazing experience of being a kid and hearing a song in a video game and going, holy shit, like this really stuck with me? Yeah. Well, actually, like one of the first memories I have is video gaming. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom got a Nintendo when uh, I was three. So three, yes. <laughs> so you just put it in front of you and it's like, bye, Jane. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to the store. No. <laughs> Never came back. <laughs> no, she did. But um, yeah, so probably Mario Brothers is the first thing I ever remember listening to. Um, but like the first piece of music that really hit me as far as video game is Final Fantasy One. Yeah, and that came out, I believe, two years two years after that. So yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, looking back at that. In terms of the, the spectrum of gaming music, obviously we were dealing with 8-bit where you could not do anything with an orchestra or guitar work. Mm -hmm. It was all inside of that system. And all, now, you know, games are basically essentially a, a film. Yeah. Film scores. I've got to ask you, which side do you like more at this point? Which, 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 which genre? genre do you, yeah. are you still... St not stuck in the past, but are you still you have like a fond memory of that past? Yeah. Are you more of a fan of, of, of more classical scores now in video games, or are you still hoping for more of an 8-bit sound? No, that's that's a very good question, because they're totally two different things. They play two totally different roles. Mm -hmm. um, the, the old video game themes are very anthemic. And like they had to get that tune across, they had to get the melody across like very simply, and they had to get it in your brain because they didn't have enough room to do these full scores. So just that 30 seconds had to be listenable. Yeah. So and that that makes great melodies right there. Whereas uh, the new stuff is more atmospheric mm -hmm. and more reactionary. For example, if you move around a level, the music's going to change, or if you get close to an enemy and stuff like that, so it has to be more atmospheric, so you don't have those themes, it's more background, yeah, if totally. anything. So, so so, I think I'm more privy to uh, the old school, because I really like good melodies, you know, I really like something that hits you hard. Yeah, well obviously something that you remember right away. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that's what, my personal opinion, maybe you share this, is games nowadays, we don't, we don't get that anymore as much. Mm -hmm. You know, Deus Ex, it has a couple of moments. It's one of my favorite scores of like this current generation, next gen sort of uh, scores. But if you, or like, let's just say Mass Effect. Mass Effect doesn't have an underlining uh, theme throughout it. Totally. It has tons of different themes, but there's not that one theme like you would have from an 8-bit Mario game mm -hmm. that you can just hear and go, oh, that's Mario, Mario, Mario. Yeah. That's something that I kind of miss. Mm -hmm. You know, like classic Resident Evil, the first Resident Evil had those, sort of, had that little bit of a score to it. And I remember thinking when, during PS1 era where we started to lose that in gaming. We started to lose that sort of uniqueness and because it was so saturated with other sound effects and atmosphere, yeah. that yeah, I have to probably go with your side as well. Yeah. Sort of like an 8-bit side, I, I've always been more of a fan of that because you know, there's nothing like popping in an old Mega Man game and hearing the theme to, say, like, Iceman. Oh, yeah, exactly. And it's like, yeah. it's, like it's so recognizable. Mm-hmm. Well, 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 that's it. Like, 
Name a song from this current generation that just stuck in your head. Like, it's really hard to do. It's really hard to find something that sticks out. Yeah, we gotta ask you guys if there's something out there that you played and it just stuck in your head. For me, like, Mass Effect 2, this sounds crazy, but the the, the music that plays during the menu okay. is, like, I'll never forget that. Mm -hmm. It was just something about that piano hit, and if you listen to my Sick Kid stuff, I think that a lot of my inspiration comes from classic 8-bit because I, I there's no lyrics in mine, so it's like I have those little melodies that I try to put into the songs and you hear it and you go, okay, that's sick kid. But same as, you know, I take influence from like Johnny Cash and his later stuff before he passed away. He used a lot of like lower end piano notes that just to sort of highlight the song or make it a little bit more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know, darker. Mm -hmm. he, he had that like darker tone to him before he passed away and I, I love that stuff. So that's where I kind of got my influence. So I'm kind of wondering where do you get your influence from? Well actually, coincidentally, Johnny Cash, like I'm such a big fan of Johnny Cash. So, mm -hmm. so at least we have that in common. Yeah, at least uh, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> Nothing else, that's it, interview. You know, <laughs> just start flipping. Time to get the fuck <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, where do I get my influence? Like musically, um, video games were actually a big part of that, but, but aside from that, have you ever heard of Dick Dale? Dick no. Dale and, and the Dell Towns? Uh, he's a gentleman, he he did the Pulp Fiction theme. That's probably what he's most famous oh, okay. for. Yeah. You mean that dun, uh, dun, yeah, dun, dun Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that, so that everyone that, knows that. that. Exactly. So that's that sort of style I really like. Um, and I play my guitar upside down left handed, and so does he. So, nice. I, so I don't know if you know that. that I play it flipped. So I don't know no, I've noticed that. that. Okay. I've yeah. noticed that because the yeah. keys are the opposite way. Which is totally a good party trick because, you know, I'm playing it the right way and then I just flip it over and all the girls are like, oh my god. It's no. epic game music. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Before you do it, they go, oh, it's just James. Then you yeah. do it and they go, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's epic game music. Um, but what's funny about that is a lot of left-handed guitarists are so, it's so unique. Mm -hmm. You hardly see it anymore. I mean, obviously, Jimi Hendrix is one of the first majors you would see with a left-handed guitar. Yeah. But how, when did you realize that you could do both ways? Um, well, how I learned to play guitar is I just borrowed my buddy's guitar. And he was right-handed, and I just picked it up, and it just made sense to me. Mm -hmm. And also, musically, it kind of makes sense, because the lower string is at the bottom, and the higher string is at the top. Yeah, it would make sense that way. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I played left-handed or right what is this right-handed wait wait, this is, wait wait okay yeah That's, this this is this is the way i play so this is left hand so i play so, right hand okay you play. but uh <laughs> what hand do you write with <laughs> my right hand okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, an idiot on this <laughs> all right i got my drink in my xbox cup Ooh. do you take sides by the way uh i'm not even gonna start that <laughs> no come on uh maybe maybe nintendo if that counts does that even count anymore no okay absolutely not <laughs> although i'm clearly a nintendo fanboy because i'm wearing this hat right now there you go look at that guy and this this right here look at that who gets a zelda tattoo that's awesome that's actually i'm thinking about getting you know the classic um Link to the past image of the sword and the stone. Yeah, yeah. And oh. then the forest, the squirrels. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put that here and wrap it around. Oh man. That's happening. There you go. Live. Soon. Do it live. Make a video of that of you getting the tattoo. <laughs> I, I thought about that, but apparently where I go they were like, No, you can't film in here. I'm like, oh, really? Why? I'm like, you must be breaking the law. I gotta ask, how did you start your channel? Everyone always wants to know this story about how like how 3 KB started and honestly it was just Mike and I were like, let's make a show. Yeah. Is it that boring or was it amazing? Um, well, I was just coming out of, like, I, I was in a touring band called The Delinquents for 10 years. Nice. And so I was just coming off of that. And I've always been doing game covers. Um, I've always been strumming them out on the guitar and everything like that. But I saw what everyone else was doing. And there was actually this YouTuber called uh, Caleb Elijah. And I don't know if he's even around anymore doing stuff because I haven't seen anything from him. But he, he was always doing Final Fantasy VI tunes, and nice. he was doing it in a similar style that I do, though I mostly film outside, he was filming inside, but I was like, I could do that. Um, and so I started it on another channel. Um, that channel was like... That channel YouTube, was long gone. YouTube.com slash XWC. <laughs> exactly. And then seven sixes. Yeah, exactly. You know uh, what's funny about that? I think that 
people start YouTube shows and they just use a username, but they don't really, or you know what I mean? They don't understand what's going to happen if it actually catches on. Well, yeah, well, well, yeah, especially since like most people started their channel like six, seven years ago, which, yeah. which, which I did, and my my channel was just for liking things yeah, and yeah. watching it. Totally. I had no idea it would go this far. So, well, yeah. branding wise, you never thought like, oh, I could name a show and have T-shirts and and do all this stuff, and then yeah, exactly. Same as like the Game Chasers is like. Captain Sprinkles, or whatever, <laughs> isn't it? something like that. <laughs> it's like Captain YouTube. Sprinkles. I think it literally is YouTube.com slash Captain Sprinkles. Go to go to YouTube.com slash Captain Sprinkles right now. I don't know. And, 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 and uh, right, but it is, right, who, right, right, I, Jason, J Jason sent you. Yeah, I wonder who, who owns the Game Chasers, the actual Game Chasers, the Game Chasers. We, the we should look that up. Someone, yeah, someone who could become really rich one day. <laughs> we should. Hmm. <laughs> In terms of how many videos you have now, mm -hmm. how long have you been doing it and how many videos do you have? How many covers have you done? I have Thousands, done... Thousands, millions. <laughs> no, it's only actually, I have 135 videos. Which is nuts. I know, and but like 10 of those are like vlogs or whatever. So they don't count, so it's like, yeah. I gotta ask you this. Yeah. From being in a band before this for 10 years, obviously you were used to being in front of people, live oh, people, but definitely. when you started to put the camera in front of you and just go into a park and go like this, <laughs> was it diff was, did you have a hard time at the beginning? Like, what Oh, definitely. Were you like standing like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that, that's pretty much it. it. Like, it's easier to play in front of a bunch of people because they're a faceless crowd, right? Yeah. If you're just staying there, in front of a camera and you know that cam the camera almost feels like a person sometimes you know what totally. I mean and I, that gives a lot of anxiety and you know you see a lot of my videos I'm like super nervous I'm like uh, you know. like earlier ones do yeah, you remember ones. recording your first ever one uh the first uh epic game music uh yeah it was actually in my backyard I just got like this camera for my birthday and I'm like all right today's the day I do this <laughs> uh, today's the day I record on a Lac Man cover, I think it was. Nice. Yeah, so that was the first Epic Game. Out of all of the videos you've done, do you have a favorite at this point in time? Or do you have something coming up that you're really excited about? And Oh, there's definitely a couple of things, but I can't get into that are coming up. But uh, some of the ones I really like... It involves like a naked re-res. <laughs> All naked re-res. Dan dancing. Yeah. It's a cover of like some song, like the score from Science of the Lambs. <laughs> I don't even want to visualize that. I did. I loved it. <laughs> exactly. All right. Look forward to that. Shout out to Shane from Rerez. Yeah, Shane Lewis. Cheers, buddy. Who's definitely naked right now. Yeah. Huh? That's just how he does. He's actually a nudist. Do you have a favorite? Uh, oh, yes. Do I have a favorite? Um, some of the medleys I actually really like. Uh, the, there was the Tetris medley. Because, like, you can't go wrong with Tetris. The and, classic, yeah. Yeah, and, and actually most of the Tetris uh, songs were old folk songs or yeah, classical totally. songs, right? So actually there's, I don't think there's an original song in any of the original Tetris's. No, I don't think so either because I remember looking up the history of that stuff and it, it like the, what's his name? Was his name Alex who created the game or something? Yeah, Alexi something. Something like that. Something. I saw an interview with that because people were like, the music is almost as famous as the game itself, like the actual gameplay. Yeah, pretty much. And he was talking about that and mm -hmm. like how it was taken from like the past and like certain aspects of Russian culture and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. But so yeah, I can imagine playing the Tetris theme is awesome on guitar. Yeah. Yeah. People are like, what are you doing? <laughs> You're just kinda like leaning over. Well this, this is this is this is where Jay huffs his gas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm back, man. Got another question for you. <laughs> Gotta ask this one. Okay. Favorite video game of all time. Oh, that that's easy. Really? Uh, yes. Final Fantasy IV. Or really? Why? Or Final Fantasy II. Why? What? Um, well, both for the music. You know, it's it's such cinematic music. Yeah. Well, it's kind of weird how he writes the music. It's like the leads are cinematic, but the the like bass and drums are like from a rock band. It's like a really bizarre mix, but it works really well. And, I don't know, it just does a really good job of conveying this story. It's really entertaining. It's just something that's stuck with me my, my entire life. That's mm -hmm. why, mostly on my channel, you see, like, a fair number of covers of Final Fantasy IV covers. No, totally. I mean, I could... Yeah. When I go... Th when I was looking through them the other day, I was like... I, you could obviously see your influences mm -hmm. in terms of what you listened to when you were younger and, and stuff like that. Yeah. I gotta ask you this, though. Mm -hmm. When you were a kid, did you ever... 
you know, when this sounds crazy, we're, we're not super old. I'm older, way <laughs> older, like a million years older than you. But <laughs> when we were young, we probably had PCs and downloaded MP3s. Do you ever remember like trying to find the scores when you were younger? Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, you know those mini tape recorders? Oh, blah. Yeah, <laughs> the mini discs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually used to record um, some of the music and I'd listen to it. Like, I remember even in high school, the GoldenEye soundtrack. Oh, my God. Like, people used to give me such shit for it. Like, you know, what are you listening to? And I'm like, GoldenEye. And they're like, what? Wedgie. You know. I gotta ask you as a Nintendo fan. Yeah, yeah. Everyone wants to know, what would you do if you were at Nintendo right now? Well, let's stop. Let's stop the fucking copyright claim bullshit. Are they hitting, first off? Are they hitting you? No. So like, that's what's funny. But that's because you. That's because that's because um, I'm building it all from the ground up. Like they're they're because you know it's sort of like a fingerprint, and I'm sort of making my own fingerprint. Right? No, totally. Like, yeah. So that so makes more sense. The thing is, like you know. They're claiming these videos, but I've never been claimed, and I, we have 640 something videos, and a lot of some of those are Nintendo. Never been claimed by Nintendo. You've never been claimed. You know what I've kind of noticed is there. I think what happened with that, a few big YouTubers got claimed, yeah. automated claimed, yeah, and they made a big stink about it, and now everyone assumes they do it to every Nintendo video that ever comes out. But I've I've never been hit with it ever. Could be. I've I've known maybe three people I think that have been hit with it, but like that's about it. So you would shut the claims off. Yeah. Which you know this kind of is funny. Mario Kart 8 has direct, I hear direct upload. Yes. And does that not mean that they can just claim their own footage? Yeah, exactly. No, that's sort of absurd. Why even have that? You know. Well, to me, it sounds like, let's play the evil villain here. That's an evil way of making amazing revenue. Yeah. yeah. Of being like. Hey, you can upload our video directly from the game, and then we're gonna claim it. <laughs> so you're doing our work, but you're getting something kind of out of it. Are you? You're not. I don't know. That's a whole other video. Yeah, definitely. So what else would you do? I uh, mean, new me new Metroid game. Yeah, the VGAs. Reggie had the pin on, and and then he had somebody from Retro Studio next to him. So he had the Metroid pin, the, the and they kept mentioning like, hey, these guys did an amazing video game last time for us. Yeah, exactly. And now. They're doing Donkey Kong, and it's like, I understand why he's there, Donkey Kong, but that pin, mm -hmm. yes, and then everyone's like, oh, he always wears different pins. But, come on, if that wasn't a hint, yeah, I don't exactly. know what, what is. That, that in every Nintendo Direct, there is some Metroid reference. Even in the, in the did you watch the Tamadachi, I think it is, Tamadachi yeah, yeah, yeah. Life? Yeah, well, half of it was about Samus. Yeah. Why I, would they even do that? Why would she be there? Yeah, because people... Let's be honest, a lot of this generation doesn't... Who's Samus? Yeah. You know what I mean? Unless they're into Metroid, they're not going to know it's a... Samus is a major Nintendo character. Oh. Yeah. And the fact that they're showing her out of the suit as much as they are... Yeah. Especially like with Smash Brothers coming out, the, the Tamagotchi thing, yeah. which we did a video on. I, I think that we're getting the hints, like you're saying, and I think that that's a brilliant... Uh, at E3, we need to see it. Yeah, exactly. They need, exactly. All they need to do is go actual gameplay footage, show 30 seconds of it, and make it epic as hell, mm -hmm. and we're all sold. Yeah. That's that's one thing with Nintendo for me that they're getting a little bit better at, but holy shit in the past have they been horrible at that stuff. They, they have no idea how to build hype. Mm -hmm. They go like, oh, there's a new Zelda game coming. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they go like this. Thank you. <laughs> and then they leave. And you're like, just show... Just show like a panning shot of his face. Yeah, just anything. Just <laughs> you know what I mean. Just yeah. to get his hype. So, yeah. Metroid game. Yeah. Any, what else would would you do? Uh, well, it's hard to tell what to do with the state of Wii U because like that is that is that is the it's thorn. A, it's <laughs> a thorn in their foot right now, right? It's the it's the uh, Dreamcast of this gen. Yeah, like what would you do then? Would you dump it and go with the new the new idea they have? Well, I. I think they probably will, but I, I'm not sure if that'll help any. Like, given the Wii U is a fine system, but it just doesn't have, you know, it's basically features that it's missing. Features yep. that the Xbox One and PS4 have, such as sharing, streaming, and yep. things they didn't think about because they developed their system earlier, like a year earlier. Well, there's one other thing it's missing is called third party. No, oh, and there's, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. nothing. <laughs> yeah. Like. But, okay. but but do you buy a Nintendo to play third-party games, or do you buy a... See, that's that's a good argument, right? Yeah. People are going to be like, well, you, 
you'll buy a Nintendo system just for Mario Kart. Like the last yeah. Mario Kart we sold between 25 and 30 million copies, mm -hmm. one game. Yeah. That's enough to like to carry the system the whole life. Like yeah. that one game. Yeah. And it's like Drop a Zelda, a Metroid, and, and, and a Mario Kart, and we're done. Yeah. Throw in a Mario Golf where uh, there's a, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But, wouldn't, like imagine Skyrim with the, the, the gamepad. It'd be amazing and I, and if it looked just as good as the PC version, which I think they probably could pull off oh, now. Yeah. I would love to have that menu on there. You know what I mean? No, that's totally a good point. And that's that's there for that reason. I'm just sad to see them not go after it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Games like Deus Ex, boom, the touchpad. They brought that out. That was brilliant. I like to see that on there. But mm -hmm. they never like really went for it. Yeah. You know, game like Zelda is built for this. We already know that it's going to be amazing to go to that touch screen and blah blah blah. But even the, even the gamepad didn't work as well as I hoped it did with the system. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in closing in this whole Nintendo thing, so you basically bring all of the major titles out. Yeah. But again, with the Wii U, I'm, I'm, I, I kind of think we need to go to that next idea. We'll, we'll see if Nintendo can support Nintendo. Did that make any sense? I don't think it did. No, that is true, because good. Nintendo has a huge following yeah. But can they support, like, back it up? I, who knows? Yeah. Here's another cool announcement we can do in the video. Calm Bravo's coming up. You know the dates. Indeed, it's uh, July 18th to the 20th. In you Hamilton, know more Ontario. than me. Yeah, yeah, Hamilton, Ontario. Who's going to be there? Do you know the names? Uh, there's going to be uh, Angry Joe, Brantle Floss. By the way, Angry Joe's going to be there, and I'm going to bring him some Lorazepam. Okay. And see if we All can right. yeah, make him happy, Joe. Yeah, exactly. Brentle Floss. Uh, Angry Joe, um... You don't know who like, uh, Game Chasers? Yes, Game Chasers. 8-Bit uh, Eric, hopefully. Mm -hmm. I think I he's think, coming with that. Well, he's like like the third Game Chaser, wouldn't you consider? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. He has to come. He's, he's, he's Yoko Ono of the Game Chasers. Is Shane coming? Yeah, Shane's, Shane, gonna come. Shane, Shane's gonna come. We're going? Yeah. Who else? That's it. Oh, this well, is there, only, there's, there's more. There's yeah, there's, more. There's, there's, there, there's more coming, but like, you know, it's, this is us. there will be announcements soon. Oh yeah, there's some secret ones probably. Yeah. About a week ago, actually, about a month ago, you asked me to be part of a charity album, mm -hmm. and that actually is out now. So yeah. let's get some info on what that's about. Yeah, exactly. Uh, my mom are doing it, and it's a charity album. It only costs five bucks, and it supports the Canadian Pul Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation and the Vasculus Vasculitis Foundation of Canada. Um, and so, like, for for example, uh, like Harold uh, Ramis, the uh, the guy who wrote Ghostbusters and passed uh, away recently, and that's what he passed away from is yep. uh, vasculitis. So just picture out if we still had him. So yeah, if you have just five bucks to donate, you know we'll leave a link in the description, I guess. Totally. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I'll take ten percent. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, there's there's <laughs> such <Can you> imagine <laughs> there's such charity album. <laughs> J. Robin, J. Robin, the charities. No, but, I, I donated one of my songs to it. Yeah, and so so, so he's on there. Uh, I'm on there. Brentel Floss is on there. On Being Human, DJ Cutman. Uh, too many people. So it's uh, 20 tracks, and they're too all many. great. Too many. Too many that we cut a few. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so for, for like five bucks. <laughs> Take get... a leap, McJagger. <laughs> yeah. We don't have room. Sean Hatton. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. Go get a haircut. So... It's out now. Link in inner bar to it. It's going to a good cause. I always like to support all sorts of different charities, so thanks for asking me to actually be a part of that. Yeah, no and um, what's what's really cool about this is how many tracks. How many tracks are there? There are twenty actually. Which is insane. For five bucks, you get twenty tracks. And if you want to just even hear the album before you buy it, it's on the same site I use for my music. So yes, Bandcamp. So it's at dianaronald.bandcamp.com. So check that out. That's actually super important. So thanks for checking that out, guys. So how's it feel to be part of the Retroware crew? That was that was an amazing feeling when uh, John and Lance asked me to be on because like there's so many uh, content creators there that I idolize, and I was just super impressed. And it's been like everyone's really nice on there, and it's great it's been a great time right? no when i saw you joined it i was like that's the perfect couple yeah i was like that's awesome well I'm yeah glad, i'm glad they that happened yeah well it's cool everyone on this website is so specialized in doing their own thing that's very unique so like that 
that meant a lot to me when they asked me because I'm like, oh crap, I'm retroware good or something like that. And, you know, no, it's awesome. Yeah. So once again, epic game music. If you don't know what that is, you should by now. Link in Interbar to his channel, the 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 album that uh, you put together for charity, which again, thank you for uh, asking me to be part of. No problem. Um, so link in the Interbar to those things. If you've never seen one of his videos, it's kind of a unique experience. It's one of those things that I think a lot of people probably um, put the music on and game to, mm -hmm. and and it's same thing as like people say that to me. They're like, I really use your music when I'm gaming. So it's like one of those just relaxing things that you can do while you're listening to or just playing a game. And that's definitely something I do like when I'm rendering music. I listen to some of your tracks. Sweet. So definitely, guys, check him out. Uh, we'll be at Calm Ravel again. I don't remember the dates because I don't remember anything. July 18th to the 20th. Yeah, and inclu anything else you want to uh, say uh, well, to the fine folks? Well, uh, thank you guys for watching, and thank you very much for having me on. Oh, this, totally. this, this has been in the making for a long time. Since, Literally like a year. Yeah, exactly, since we live in the same city and live close-ish to each other, I guess. Well, what's funny was I remember walking, and I don't even know where I was, and I saw you, and you saw me, and we literally looked at each other and kept walking. <laughs> then we turned and went, Hey, <laughs> that guy. And you were like, aren't you the guy? And I go, you're the guy. <laughs> and then a then year we were later, guys. one year later. Yeah. But no, I ran into you a few times. Yeah, uh, at Con Bravo no, last not, year. Just, just on the street. Oh yeah, you yeah see, of course. You're everywhere, you're a street walker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> not that kind of street walker. Any last uh, tidbits about the next video? Come on, give us a hint of something. Uh, it, Give it up a little. It is somewhat, okay, it's actually a YouTuber's theme, and this YouTuber just launched a website, so that is, that, that is a clue. Um, uh, it's, I don't know. And any other, uh, things coming up on the channel that you want to, uh? Uh, well, I'm having, currently having my YouTuber month. Right now, oh, yeah. I cover YouTubers themes. So, so yeah, if, if you want, how does that work? Uh, there is a video on my channel called YouTuber Month, and people can go right in the comments section, or you can just even tweet at me at Epic Game Music. Hey, asshole. Yeah. Final Fantasy V, again, <laughs> yeah. play it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, by the way, in closing, I think that uh, one of my favorite things about your channel for me is obviously the music, and like I said before, uh, is... <laughs> is watching you in a park and knowing that you're in a park somewhere in Toronto going just jamming out to a song and I know somewhere there's like an Asian lady with like uh, like an umbrella looking at you like what the fuck is happening over there <laughs> yeah, exactly. and what, then she's like weirdo. slowly leaving <laughs> but uh, the other thing I wanted to bring up was some of the comments on your channel are, are my favorite comments I've ever read oh, and, yeah. and Again, he does covers of songs. So there's one comment on, I think, a Mega Man 2 uh, <laughs> video where somebody says, this sounds way too much like Mega Man. He's a ripoff artist. Unsubscribing. <laughs> yep. Hilarious people that come to my channel. I, I love that comment. It's one of my favorite comments of all time. Yeah. And I, I've been doing it for four or five years now. Best comment yeah. by far. Yeah. Do you have any favorite comments? Oh, uh, because like what, what I'm doing is I think clearly a music video. Like I think there, there's, no, no, there's no illusion that it isn't. But people always write, you know, hey, this is fake. His guitar isn't plugged in. <laughs> but, like... <laughs> I'm outside. Sometimes I'm playing with gloves on, you know what I mean? <laughs> you like Mario gloves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, how can he play with the Mario gloves on? <laughs> He's so good. Yeah, exactly. Oh, brother. But yeah. well, that's YouTube for you. Yeah, that's how it is. So you can check you out on RetroWare TV, the mm -hmm. website, yeah. uh, on your channel. Yep. I'm not going to say the ULR or whatever because it's like... Search Epic Game Music, <laughs> yeah. how about that? Uh, and uh, link in the interbar to that. So thank you once again for coming on the show. No problem. Thank you for having me. And uh, uh, we'll see you guys at Con Bravo together. And to, to rip off Johnny Millennium as usual, because I like to do that, until next time. He's probably... He's going to sue me at this point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <Bye>. <laughs> <laughs> the most awkward ending ever. <laughs> yeah, that, that was good though.